My name is Professor Van Gumpel, and most of you I've had the privilege to meet, but many of you I haven't. Um, my topic today is on failure, and perfect timing here, the video that I wanted to show you did not work. So, um, anyway, um, you can go ahead and click to the next one. Okay, so how did I choose failure? How did I choose this topic? There's two pictures up there. The one on the left is the faculty at a retreat that we attended before school started. Um, it's a time where we gather together and talk about you, we talk about us, we talk about how we can be better, how we can meet your needs. That's a picture of us praying for you. Um, the idea of failure came up at our faculty retreat and um, somebody was talking about how do we help our students with this idea of failure? And um, one of the faculty members raised their hand, and I can't even remember who it was, but they said, you know, before we help our students, I think we need to think about how we handle failure. How do we handle it? And for me, that was kind of a deer in headlights. Um, I don't handle failure very well. Um, I'm somewhat of a perfectionist, and I have a really hard time when plans change. So um, it was very thought-provoking to me, and I thought back um, in my life about different events that have happened. The other picture is a picture of an activity that I do with my students, and I pass out a little group of M&Ms, and so for each color, they share based on the color, and you see the bottom is green. And so I ask my students to share a worry. If they have three green, they share three. If they have one, they share one. I would say 75% of the students that shared at the beginning of the semester, their worry was failure. It was, I'm not going to pass my classes. It was, I'm going to let somebody down. It was, I'm not going to play my sport. I'm not going to get my playing time. So I need to talk about failure, and I think you guys need to talk about failure as well. And so that's where I got my topic. I'm going to switch. Okay, so I taught first grade, and in first grade, one of my top priorities was to, for students to be connected to the learning. I wanted them to be engaged, I wanted them to take ownership of their learning, and so today, today I'm going to challenge you to do that. And one of the ways we did that in the classroom was, when we learned new vocabulary, we created mind movies. So we pictured in our mind, how do we connect for the, to this word? So that's what I'm going to challenge you today to do. The other thing we did in our classroom is when my first graders got up to present, they said, I'm going to check my audience. And they'd say, Mrs. V, Mrs. V, I'm checking my audience. So they'd scan, and they'd lock eye contact with somebody. They'd wait, and they'd say, I don't think you're actively listening. <laughs> Could you please put your pencil away? Mrs. V, I'm going to check my audience. So that's what I'm going to do today. I want you to be engaged in this learning. I want you to apply it to your life. So I'm going to challenge you to put away your headphones, to put away your phone, and engage in the learning today. I want you to create a mind movie. What do you think about when you hear the word failure? What comes to your mind? Is there a voice that's not your own? Is it your own voice? Where are you? What is happening? What is your memory? Today, I want us to change our relationship with failure, and I'm going to share a few ideas of some things I thought about to help with my life, okay? Um, my failure is connected to York. You can see the water tower there in York Elementary. I went to York College. I double majored in psychology. Shout out to psychology majors and education. I love both very much. Um, so I student taught at York Elementary had a wonderful experience. I was a very good student. I wasn't, I didn't have the top ACT score, but I studied very hard. I had high expectations for myself. My field experience went, went very well in my, um, in the classroom. Um, they said very positive things, and then a position came available at York Elementary. And in my mind, I thought, oh my goodness, this is how it's supposed to be. I had just gotten married, and I interviewed for the job. I thought it went very well. I had people at the school telling me, we're so excited, you're going to be at our school, we're so excited to have you. I was excited, people would say, how did the interview go? And I would say, I think it went okay. But you know when you say that and you really think, I have this in the bag? Well, that's what I thought. Um, and then the bombshell was dropped. 
I didn't get the job. I, I didn't know why. Um, I just, I didn't get the job. And in my mind, I thought, I am a failure. What did I do wrong? Where did I go wrong? So that is a failure that I thought about when I was reflecting. You can go to the next slide. What I want us to do today is I want us to focus on three ways that we can help with this relationship with failure. I want us to stop personalizing it, okay? Failure is a bruise, not a tattoo. The crazy thing about this quote is the power is in your court because you can make it a tattoo, you can wear it as a tattoo, and you can carry it through your life being a tattoo. Or you can treat it as it really is, and it's a bruise that eventually will go away. Um, the difference with those two um, views is shame. Shame personalizes our failure. We tend to become what we're ashamed of. I'm bad versus I did a bad thing. We need to own up to it. We need to examine, learn, and let it go. And that's one, um, one thing that I need to do with this job opportunity. The verse that I think about is Ephesians 1.4. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy without fault in his eyes. God and his view of you has absolutely nothing to do with failure. If you heard that right, without fault in his eyes. We put that on ourselves. God sees you as a precious being. The next idea click again sorry <laughs> there's this idea that um, when I was thinking about it I believe that pride fuels our failure and I believe that humility fuels our perspective I had a lot of pride when I was dealing with that failure of losing that job I grew up in York I knew a lot of people I was worried about what people thought about me um, I had a pretty good reputation and I thought maybe they think I did something really bad and that's why I didn't get the job. That's all pride. If I would have approached that situation with humility, I would have, I would, it would have broadened my horizons. I would have been listening to others more and I would have realized that maybe there's a different path for me. Maybe God doesn't want me in North Nebraska. Um, so I want you to think about that. When you're thinking about your failure, don't forget it. Remember it. How did you approach your failure? With pride or humility? It's only a true failure when we don't learn from it. It doesn't mean that it's going to be fun. It might crack us open in ways that we've never experienced. But we need to learn from it. And the verse that I think of is the next slide. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. It tells us right there, when pride is connected to failure, there's not a lot of learning that can take place. Okay. And the last point is, we need to pump up our ambiguity muscle. What does ambiguity mean? Ambiguity is the, the option of more than one interpretation. So this kind of goes back to my idea of I have a hard time with change. We need to embrace change. We need to embrace a different path. We need to embrace a different way to get from point A to point B. This idea of ambiguity. If you see the door, there's a closed door there. That was a closed door for me. York was a closed door. So what was going to happen next? Where did the door open? Well, the door opened in Kansas. If you want to change the slide. Okay, this was my classroom in Kansas. This is where I went. It's not what I had pictured at all. It's not what I wanted at all, but it's where God needed me, and it's where I was actually blessed. These are my students. I taught them first and second grade. I got to loop with them. Um, I was looking at pictures the other night. I knew all their names. I know their, most of their reading levels when they came in. I know their reading levels when they left me. Um, I know quirky things about them. Um, I remember what they want to be when they grow up, and they are actually maybe out of college, which dates me, but uh, anyway, um, I got invitations to graduations, um, so I was the teacher, and they were the blessing. They are impressed upon my heart. So what I thought was a failure was actually a different path for me, and I viewed it as a failure because of my pride and my lack of perspective. 
there are two lessons that I think of that came from that failure um, immediately. One was that I had just gotten married and I was very comfortable in York and close with my family. Moving to Kansas caused me to be vulnerable, which caused me to depend on my husband, which really helped our marriage because we were both in a new place and we were both insecure. The other blessing from this job is I always wanted to have a family and my number one goal was being a mother. And the first year I received an award in Wichita, which awards are wonderful. But what the award did is it allowed me to basically have a job of preference in Wichita. And I was able to stay home for the majority of the time with my children and work one to two days a week while they were home. So that was a huge blessing that I don't know if that would have happened in York, Nebraska. Um, and then we'll go ahead and skip the last slide. You can see it. That's a picture of my kids, but I don't think it's going to work. So we'll go ahead and pass it. Okay. The last thing I want you to do, are you hanging with me? Are your headphones off? Are your phones put away? I gotta check my audience. Okay. I'm gonna read you a list of failures this morning, and I want you to listen to the vulnerability. I want you to listen to the desperation. I want you to see if any of this list connects to your life, okay? I believe the lies of Satan. After years of being bullied when I was very young, I believed I had no worth. I battled for years with a low self-esteem and actually will always battle with it. I thought I would never be a good father because of my own experience with my dad. I failed to get a promotion that I really wanted. I allowed a child to get bullied and did not stand up for what's right. Now I bear the guilt. After divorce, I believed I had no worth. I could not be abused because of my failed marriage. I wasn't athletic. I was overweight. I was an introvert. I was put up for adoption the second day of life. I was born with a club foot and missing limbs. I went through life thinking nobody wanted me. I failed the praxis in the content area that I was teaching in. I was so embarrassed. I lost a job I was very successful at. I worked very hard and won awards. It left me doubting everything I believed in. Pornography attacked my marriage. I was asked to leave Oklahoma Christian College. I wasn't following the rules. At times, I failed to love my wife and children because I put my job first. I'm going to ask the York College faculty and staff to stand. We are broken. We are inadequate. I hope you heard that through some of these, these items that I read. But I want you to know that verse up there. Look around, YC students. We believe that God can restore what is broken. And he can change it into something amazing. Thank you.